Spirit of God, Christ into this place. Father, we thank you this day for your grace and for your mercy and for all that you do. And we are so thankful that you have accepted us and made us a part of your family. And we thank you for that, Father. And you've called us and you've given us a specific purpose. And we desire to run that race and fulfill the purpose whereby you have called us. Thank you so much. And so as we gather here today, we desire a word from you. You'll speak to us out of your word. For you've instructed us to give attention unto your words, to incline our ears unto your sayings, to not allow your word to depart from our eyes, but to keep them in the midst of our hearts. For truly your words are life unto those that find them and health to all our flesh. And so we thank you today, Father, as we said before you to hear from you so that we can fulfill the very purpose and calling that you've placed in us. Thank you so much. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated if you will. We welcome everyone. We welcome, we welcome our viewing audience. God bless you. Thank you so much for your commitment to the kingdom of God and for your contributions that God has granted you to contribute to the efforts in filling the earth with God's glory. That's what we are called to do. Each of us have been given a calling. And that's wonderful. I think that when we find that out, it, it, you know, we, it, that, for me, it was wonderful to, to know, uh, of, uh, the, the worth that we have. One of the tricks of the devil is to, uh, render us worthless. He always try to make people think less of themselves than what they really are. But when you, uh, when God saves you, he, uh, he gives you purpose. In fact, that's the word of God. We know that's the truth because that's what he says. And so there is no, there is no insignificant person in the body of Christ. If you're a Christian, you are significant and you have a place and you have a purpose. And, and it's important to know that, you know, because so, so often times people and, you know, people, we just think, well, you know, I just, just hanging in there. We even use that term, whatever that is. No, I'm not hanging anywhere. I'm purposeful. And, and I'm telling you, you need to know that. You need to know that, that you are valuable and that you have purpose. And, and, and you do make a difference. There is a difference in what, in whether you are there or not. There is a, there is a, there's a purpose and a value. And the word of God confirms that. I'm not just saying this. You know, the scripture says, <coughs> a, one, a scripture over in uh, second Timothy chapter one and the ninth verse says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose. Think about that. His purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ before time began. And, uh, you know, so know that, know that. Even, I, you know, I've, I've talked to people that, uh, you know, people that, you know, the press, whatever that is, again, you know, they, they get beat up and, 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 you know, just feeling bad about themselves and, and no, feel worthless. Maybe you've been there. I don't know. But that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie from hell. Jesus told us the, what the devil is. He said he's a liar. He's a father of lies. And so don't, don't, don't listen to that. And, and if, devil, if the devil can take your worth away from you, he'll, he'll defeat you. You know, why, why do you think people commit suicide? Because they think they're worthless. They think they don't amount to much. They think the world would be better off without them. Or at least they'd be better off without the world. No, no, I, I encourage you. I mean, that, and that fact, and that is exactly what the lesson that God has for us today is. He is speaking encouragement to us. He is speaking encouragement to us. He wants us to be encouraged. He wants us to know that if we will follow him, stick with him, we win. We are winning. You, I want, God wants you to know that you are winning. Now, of course, if you decide to ignore Jesus and, and, and go try to live a life apart from Him, 
Now you're going to get in trouble. There's no question about that. But if you have, if you have made a decision that, you know, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and that you're going to just stay with him, then you, you, you are in a, you're in a winning position. And, and, and God can, can work with you and, 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 you know, grow you and develop you because that's exactly what we have to do. Nobody is going to just zip up and, and, and cruise through this. If, you, if that's what you're thinking, I can help you right now. No, this ain't going to work that way. There's a scripture that tells us to fight the good fight of faith. So, what, 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 I mean, why, why does he say that? He said, fight the good fight. Fight. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.12, 4, 12, somewhere along in that. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Fight. You got to fight for this. You got to fight for this. And if you want to want to, you know, fight for it. You know, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of time people, you know, uh, uh, you know, particular people that's looking for a spouse or something like that. Sometimes you got to, you got to fight through to get, to get, find out, you know, make connections there. Just give up, at least a little bit of opposition, you just give up. So a little cloud come over your eyes, throw up your hands. No, fight. Fight, develop an attitude of winning. We are winning. Let's go to the word of God and let God's word speak to us along those lines. And I, because that's what he wants to do. I, I, I got news. I got some good news for you. you. You know, Jesus is on our side. Or better yet, we are on Jesus' side. Should I say, you know, uh, he is he is in favor of us winning. And I want you to know that uh, Joshua chapter one. And God is uh, speaking to us uh, in this text here. There's a principle we can draw from the instruction that God gives to Joshua. Joshua takes over Moses' job position. Uh, Moses was called to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And uh, when he brought them out and, you know, you've read the story about how. All the things he went through just to get out of Egypt. He just trying to get him out of there was a was a job. And then he got him out of there. And then uh, once he got him out of there, then he got to got him got to get him across that Red Sea. That was another hurdle. And then he got him out of the Red Sea. Then got him in that wilderness. And dear God, they got tangled up in that wilderness. So they he had a job with them. So anyway, Joshua is uh, the f- replacement for Moses. And it's outlined here in this, uh, in Joshua chapter one. And let's be, read the first, that seventh verse there of Joshua chapter one. And God speaks to Joshua and says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Now, notice the instruction that God gives him. And this is the same instruction that God's giving to us, given to us today. God gives us his word and he says, ascend to my word, incline your ears to my sayings and don't let my word depart on this earth journey without God's word. You need to understand that. That's why we are sitting here right now. Uh, the, 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 one of the responsibilities of the church is to teach the word of God. That's why God put, uh, men put, Members of t- teachers in the body, pastors, teachers, evangelists, pros- pro- apostles, and prophets. He put these positions in the body for the for the edifying for the edifying of the body to building up and instructing the body, so that the body can grow and excel and be what they called to do. Uh, you can't just become a Christian and just do what you want to do. Amen. Well, you were doing that before you became to Jesus. You see, that wasn't working. No, no, you have to, you are submitting to the, uh, a, a high authority. When you come to Christ, you're submitting to a greater authority than you. And, but if you don't follow his instructions, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm appalled. I, I'm amazed. I look at the church sometime and, uh, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know, what do we think? You, you, you just gonna automatically be a good Christian? <clears throat> no. You're not going to automate the devil will see to that. Amen. You're not going to just, you know, it's a, uh, people that come there, well, I, you know, the, the devil beat them up and they run to the church and they get saved. And then they just want to just don't do nothing. Go, go on back. 
Oh, what do you think is going to happen? And then, you know, well, I'm saying, yeah, but not for long because the devil going to kill you soon. Jesus told him, he said, the thief come to kill you. He come to kill, steal, and to destroy. Now, I don't think Jesus is not lying. And if anybody knows, he knows. No, no, no. You need this in instructions. Amen. Just like there's no, Joshua is not going to be a good leader if he doesn't follow God's instructions. You are not going to be a good Christian. You are not going to be successful in your earthly ministry unless you learn to follow instruction. And instructions come from what? The Father. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Don't let my word to problem your eyes. We've got to do that. That's what I do. We teach you that. He told Joshua, he says, be strong. He said, you got to be strong, be courageous. What is that? That's an attitude. That is an attitude. Be strong and be courageous. That is a winning attitude. If you don't have a courageous attitude, don't worry, you won't make it. Be careful to obey the instructions. Well, where is your instruction? You got it right there in your lap. Amen. 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 I tell you, uh, I, I, I get a question from people. And, and, and people tell me about their problems. And, uh, uh, where's your Bible? What Bible? Well, how, how you want to know how to live without your Bible? You're not going to know. It, you don't just come to church and come down and shake the pastor's hand and just go live happily ever after. It, it doesn't work that way. The instructions here coming from God, he says, you know, be careful to obey all the instructions. Instruction. You don't know. You in some, when you get born again, you are born into a place where you've never been. You don't know anything about it. That's why God said you must be born again. So you get born again. And now, the Bible says, old things pass away. All things become new. Well, you got to find out about the new things. Boy, how am I going to find out? Instructions. You're going to have to have instructions. He says, be careful to obey all the instructions that Moses gave you. Well, Moses gave Joshua instructions on how to lead the people. Fast forward, Jesus is giving the church our instructions on what to do. It's this New Testament that we have here. These are God's instructions on how to be a Christian and how to be an effective one. I tell you, God has designed a life for us that's absolutely wonderful. It's it's a good life. I I I I, I, I it is. It, it's a good life. It's a good life. But you've got to know the Word of God. You got to know the instructions in the Word of God says you must be what born again. And then when you got to when you get born again, He gives us and He said, now I want you to grow. In the grace of Jesus. Well, how do I grow? I grow by feeding on the word of God. I grow by attending to the word. He says here, be careful to obey all the instructions. You, you got to do that. To obey all the instructions. What do you, here's, let's bring this right down, right down front in the front of the class. What do you, what are you talking about? I'm talking about your Bible and you reading your Bible daily. <coughs> That's what we're talking about. And not just reading it, but doing what it says. Get into that new covenant, that new testament. 
What is God going to teach you? What is he telling me? Well, he is telling you to be kind to one another. Yeah, but he is telling you to love one another. He is telling you to forgive one another. He is telling you to do what? Be tender hearted. Love others as I've loved you. You see what I mean? All, all these are instructions. Well, he doesn't just say say that, but he said you gotta be, you gotta do them. And don't just be hearers of the word, but be what? Doers, hallelujah! I tell you, I tell you, dear, bless God when we get a hold to this. Now, now here's the trick. Here's the trick. Here's the trick. Listen to me. This is not something that's going to just happen automatically. It's something that you're going to have to give attention to and you're going to have to grow in that. You got to grow into loving people. You, you, you take an instruction like, uh, like say, say over there, uh, Ephesians 4.32. Ephesians, this, this is instructions here. Ephesians 4.32. Right there, this is a new covenant. And do what? Oh, hold it right there. Be what? Ha <laughs> ha. Think about that. This instruction now. What did, he, what did God tell Joshua? Be careful to obey all the instruction. Simple instruction. And do what? And be kind to one another. Now, you, you got to do that. He said, that, that, that's what you do. Now, yeah, not, not just when it's convenient. Not just when it's convenient. See, anybody can be kind when it's convenient. But be kind when it's not convenient. When pe- people are not kind to you. How do you act? Come on, people. This is the truth. I- I'm trying to help us. I'm just giving it. This This is where it comes from. This is the way it is. Uh, yeah, no. No, not just when it's convenient. But now, what happened? Let, let me have it back, please. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Would you say those are instructions? Amen. Well, is that not exactly what God said to Moses, to Joshua? And <coughs> be careful. To obey all the instructions. Be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Now. Let, let me, let me, let me tell you this. You are not going to read that one time. And it's just going to just be working for you. Cause see, uh, Old motor mouth right down the street there is not going to allow that to happen. And when you have said, well, you know, I think I'm going I'm to obey that verse. And then, you know, sister motor mouth get, get started on you. And then all of a sudden you forget all about that verse in the scripture. I'm, I'm telling you where this is where we live, folks. This is where we live. So what do you got to do? You got to make up your mind. I'm going to do this the God way. And just reading that one time won't do it. It will not do it. Reading that one time. You got to make that a way of life for you. You got to keep hearing. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You got to, and then what will happen is over a period of time, that passage of scripture will come alive in you and you will become exactly what it says. It'll, the day will come when you will not have to read that verse. The day will come when that verse will actually be manifest in your life by the way you interact with people. 
God, I pray that we live long enough for that to happen to us. This word has to get down on the inside of us. And I'm telling you, it's not an overnight deal. You got to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing until you and the word become one. You know what the Bible says about Jesus? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the result, is the word of God walking around. Dear God, get a hold of that. He is the word of God walking around on the earth. Well, you and I are destined to be the same way. Bless God. Hallelujah. We are destined to be the word of God walking around on this earth. I am the word of God walking around. I don't just say I walk in love. I am love walking on the earth. God is love. I'm destined to his conformity. I'm destined to be conformed to his image. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see now? You see how you're going to die? You see how you see how you die and God come alive? That's the way it is. That, 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 that's what God is encouraging us to do. And as this happened, as this, this is a process. This is not a one-time action. This is a result of us continually giving ourselves to the Word of God and conforming to Him and we become the living Word walking around on this earth. We become that. And that's what God's talking about here. When we do that, then you will be successful in everything you do. See the last part of that verse there? Joshua 1, 7. Then you, I'm reading this out of the NLT. Then you will be successful in everything you do. How many of us like to be successful in everything you do? Well, that's the formula right there. That's the formula right there. That's the formula right there. I didn't write that. I didn't. I didn't. God did that. That's, this is God's. This is God's formula for success. Now, I, 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 every one of us wants to be successful. Every one of you that are watching by via uh, television, however you're watching, you, you want to be successful. You want to be successful. This is the formula for success. Everybody wants to be successful. Then you will be when when you receive God's instructions and obey them and 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 you become the instructions. You become that. And you will be successful in everything you do. Now, becoming the word of God, becoming the living word, walking on this earth does not mean that oppositions will not come against you. This is important. Because otherwise you think, well, 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 I've been tending to the word and I'm doing pretty good. And all why am I having such a hard time? Because that's what you choose. And I know that don't sound, I know it sounds, yeah. No. See, as you develop, now this is important. This is important, people. Listen very carefully. As you develop in the likeness of Jesus, there is an authority that develops with you. I want that to sink in. As you develop and grow in the grace, and as you become the living word of God walking on this earth, there is an authority that goes with it. Now, the devil is hoping that you don't receive the word of God and develop in it. That's that's his that's his that's his hope. 
And he will do everything he can to keep you away from developing in the word of God. Now, that's the problem with the church today is that they are biting the bait of the devil and they're allowing the devil to make them stay away from the word of God. That's why we always have so many empty seats. Well, Jesus said that the, way, the straight way is narrow. If you find it. It's like he's already told us this. So I'm not, so it doesn't shock me. It doesn't know how to do it, discourage me. And empty seats don't, don't bother me. And empty seats don't, don't discourage me because the empty seats don't hurt me. It helped the one that should be, be sitting in it. Did you hear what I said? The, the, the empty seat, it hurts the one that's supposed to be sitting in it. Didn't hurt, didn't, my seat full. My seat's occupied. The empty seat is, 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 is hurts the person that's not sitting in it. But that's the devil's intent. Because he knows if you ever get a hold of this, he knows he can pack his salad and go home. See. And so, but I want you to understand the authority. Because see, if you don't, if you don't give attention to this word the way that Jesus has instructed us to, if you don't adhere to it, if you don't carefully obey it, then you will not know about the authority that you have over the one that's keeping you away from it. You won't know about that. And then what what will happen is when he shows up, you'll think you're just having a bad hair day. No, you're not having a bad hair day. You, the devil is, is is controlling you because you won't you won't offer, you won't follow the instructions. The devil is controlling you because you will not carefully obey all the instructions. Do you understand that? Why do you think God? This is I'm just giving it to you straight. No, when you obey all the instructions, then you will be successful in everything you do. I'm reading the Bible. These are not my, I'm, these are not notes. This is scripture I'm reading to you. When you obey, when you are careful to obey all the instructions, then you will be successful in everything you do. But if you are not, then the devil will eat you for breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. And you can't do nothing about it. There's not enough education in the university to keep the devil off of you. People think so. No, no. The devil is the dean down there. So you can't, you're not going to get anything at the university to keep the devil off of you. It's the word of God or nothing. The only thing that can keep the devil off of you is God's word. And so he's going to do everything he can to keep you away from this word. Don't you see the pattern? Don't you see the pattern? And we're so smart we can't even see it. We're so Popeye smart. We can't even see the tricks of the devil. Keep you away from these instructions. Because these instructions will cause you to be successful in everything you do. That's why God said to Joshua, be careful to obey all the instructions. Can't you see that? But I don't have time. I got to go to my little league. I got to go to the big league. I got to go to the no league. I got to do this. I got to do that. Well, go ahead and do it. Take the devil with you because he'll be there with you. And he'll be home with you when you get back. Keeping you away from these instructions. And, and, and it's amazing. We are so smart and we can't even see this. Lord Jesus, help us. Be careful to obey all the instructions. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Oh, Pastor, I'm having such a hard time. Yeah, you're going to have one tomorrow too. Until you make a decision to Obey all the instructions given you. Amen. This is what I'm telling you. I, I didn't set the standard. I have to follow this. Yeah. I, my success is a result of the word of God. I, I, don't, I don't have a rabbit's foot. 
And there's a lion away. What happened to the rabbit? You, you got his foot, so you know he's still you. Somebody. Uh, don't believe that lie. Got me a rabbit's foot. <laughs> no, no, it's not, it has nothing to do with rabbit's feet. It has to do with the word of God. You, you follow what I'm saying? See, isn't it amazing? These things are so simple, so basic. It's amazing how we miss them. Everybody wants instructions. Everybody wants help. Help me. Help me. Help me. I can't help you. You're hard-headed. You won't listen. You won't obey the instructions. God is not going to come up with a, a special set of stuff for you. Everybody going to get the same set. No, you're not going to just cry and whine to God and tell him about your problem, and he's going to give you something special. No, you're going to get the same thing everybody else gets. Paul found that out over there in the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians. Oh, oh God, get this devil off me. Oh, this devil got me. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And that's all that, and I can, I can give you this, my grace is sufficient for you. What's the grace of God? His promises, his word. And, and that's what you're going to. But the grace of God is sufficient. The grace of God, the grace of God is that, is, is that, is that I'm giving you instruction. And if you follow the instruction, then you'll be successful in everything you do. That's the grace of God. I'm giving you instruction. I'm showing you how to do it. You know, it's just like somebody, just like, just like somebody giving you their password. Well, you get the password, you got access to everything they got in the computer. See what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I give you the password. God has given us the password to his computer. He's given us the password to it. But we won't even unplug it in. Okay, he can't help you. He, he, cannot, he cannot help you. Now, I'm telling you, God has no respect to person. What he does for one, he does for all. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't know, and people need to know this because I'm telling you, your whining is not going to change God's mind. No, it's not. Now, I know that may sound a little rough and mean, but it's the truth. Your whining and complaining about what's going on with you is not going to change God's mind. He's going to, because see, if God had got a, you know, got a tale of something for every one of us, can you imagine what that would be like? If he got to write a special Bible for every one of us. And it, it wouldn't, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't change a thing anyway. Because if you won't read this general Bible for everybody, you're not going to read a special one either. Amen. If he could write one just for you, you're still going to be in the same shape. You won't read that either. Ha <laughs> ha, see? You know, no, we want special instruction. No, but God, you don't know what I'm dealing with. You, you, don't, you, you know how many times I've heard that one? You, you, you don't know what I'm going through. To be perfectly honest, and I know this is rough, I know it's rough, but I don't even care. You don't know what I'm going through. Ha, see, I can say the same thing to you. You don't know what I'm going through. You see, don't you see what I mean? Don't you see, we, see, we want, we want, we want some special from God. And, and, and you can have something special, but it's the same thing that everybody gets. The instructions for all of the kids is to be careful to obey all the instruction. You're going to get that. If you do that, then you will be successful in everything you do. I, I'm, that's it. But, 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 don't but me. I'm telling you. Now, Second Timothy, let's pick up at this. Look at Second Timothy chapter 3. Because I don't know why is it that everybody thinks that their case is special. I know. I talk to people all the time. I talk to people. 
Everybody thinks that their case is special. Nobody's going to do what I'm going to do. Okay. Here we go. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 11. Persecutions, affliction, affliction, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. Hold it. Why is it that Paul was able to endure those persecutions and afflictions and opposition? Because he was careful to obey the instructions. That's why he endured them. Persecutions? Oh, bad word, yeah. I don't like persecution. Nobody does. Afflictions? Which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. But watch this. What persecutions I endured. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. If he delivered Paul, he is going to deliver you. When? When you obey the instructions and stand the same way he did. Instead of turning coward and whining and belly aching and telling everybody how hard it is. Isn't it amazing when we want to, we just want to call somebody. You don't know what I'm going. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that you know it's the truth. I, I know, I know. I mean, they just, I mean, and, 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 and I'm telling you, and I'm telling, and I know, I listen, I listen, believe me, listen. And I'm not making fun, I'm listen, I'm, I'm just trying to convey the truth, the truth to you. Just crying and blowing your nose is not going to make the devil turn you loose. In fact, that's going to really irk him on because he sees the effectiveness that he has on you. That's not gonna because you gotta know. Number one, the only problem is that you got a devil. There's a devil in the house somewhere, and he's 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 he's, he's betting on making you lose. You gotta follow th- th- these instructions. And Paul went through that. He went through that. He tell us how much stuff he went through. All the persecutions. But he said he. Why did he? What did he do? He stood firm on the word of God. What did God's word say? God say, if you would be careful to obey all the instructions, then you will be successful in everything you do. Your success has nothing to do with what things look like. See, when it, when things look bad, that don't mean things are bad. See, it, see, God told you. He said, in, his, in fact, there's a word. There's a word that He said, "Stop looking at what you see, and start looking at what's not seen." Well, what do you see? Well, I see him having a hard time. Well, don't look at that. Look at the fact that you are delivered out of it. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? You're going to have to learn these things. I know I have to learn them. And everyone, whatever I have to learn, you're going to have to. All us. There's one success road. It's the word of God. And there, there's no two or three different success roads. There's one. Paul said, watch this, watch this, watch this. What persecution did I endure, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Put the icing on the cake. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. (laughs) I know you wish that verse wasn't there. I know you wish it wasn't there. But you're not going to get around this. If you're on this earth, you are not going to get away from persecutions and opposition. I'm 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 amazed. I I I listen to people sometimes, and I I have compassion, but I don't do pity. I'll be honest with you. That pity, that thing, that feels that sorrow feeling for yourself. I don't do that. But I do have compassion. See, compassion is doing something about the situation. Pity is just sitting there whining with you. I don't do that. But I do have compassion. 
I have, a, I have enough compassion for you to show you the word of God. But I'm not going to sit there and whine about your bad toe. I, I can't, I can't do that. We don't, we don't, I don't, but I'm, I'm not told to do that. You, you understand, you understand what I mean? See, everybody is going to have to carry their own cross. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Listen, I, I'm just reading this. I'm just reading it. Yes, and all who will desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It's going to come because Jesus suffered. And I'm telling you, when you identify with Jesus, the devil gets on, will do the, do the sickum on you. No, he, that's what he does. When you come on, when you mention Jesus, the devil does the sickum boy. And he jump in, he, he, oh, yeah. Uh, people, people have things sometimes. Y'all yeah, were doing all right till I got saved. Yeah. Devil found out about it. Yes, you went out to that altar, huh? We'll do something about that. He'll be all over you just like a chicken on a bug. Oh, yeah. But listen, but here's the thing. When you are careful to obey all the instructions that's given to you, then you will also understand the authority that goes with the instruction. See, the authority is there. What, what, why do I need the authority? To know, to stand up and tell that devil, no, you will not swallow me up. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. This, this is important. All of these are the instructions that's given to us. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you authority to do what? On serpents and over what? No, just some of the power. And what? Nothing. Now show me some space there for you to whine. Just, just show me one space for you to whine and, and feel sorry for yourself. After God has given you, that's you and I, the same one that's going to rise up and get huffy when I go to the altar. And then come and try to run me away from the altar. I have authority over him. So I'm telling you, you don't leave the altar. You make him leave. You see what I mean? Now. You're going to have to learn that. You're going to have to grow to that. Because because you, you can't, you know, ain't nobody to call in the middle of the night. You can be waking nobody up. In the middle of the night when that devil going to come in and knock you half in the head. You're going to have to, you're going to have to know what you have authority for yourself. And deal with him. Deal with him. Deal with him. That's why God gave it to you. When, listen, do you have the name of Jesus? Then that is the ultimate of authority. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you. Take your grimy, grubby, greasy hands off of me. The name. The name of Jesus, the authority in the name of Jesus has been given to every child he has. And God is expecting you to rise up and read these instructions and know what you have and exercise them. You got to do that. Sit around waiting for somebody to come and pray for you. Been going to church for 50 years and you still waiting on something. Like I'm telling you, you have to do that. No, no, you have to do it. No, come on. The, the, the instructions right here. Be careful to obey all the instructions. The instructions given unto you. And the instructions work. 
<laughs> you know, you, you, you go buy, you go buy a new car, right? And, and, and the dealer take you out there and show you all the new gizmos and gadgets and stuff like that. Well, well, you gotta, you gotta obey them. You gotta follow them. You gotta, you just can't get in. Well, I'm gonna run it, operate the way I want to. And it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. You sit in the middle of the road. The car won't even move. You, what? You won't follow the instruction. You still looking for a hole to put your key in. You know, you don't put no key in there. You don't, they don't work that like that no more. I don't see where I can put that key. <laughs> well, I know they got it, but I, I like a key. Well, you just go and lock when you're going to sit on the <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? You've got to follow the instructions. They told you you don't need no key. Just hit the button, it'll go. But you want a key. I will, my dad had a key. I had a key all my life. <laughs> okay. You're not going to move this one. But you see, we come to God and we, you know, we've been listening to this world, we've been listening to this world, all this world's foolishness and this mess, and God give us instruction and we won't follow. We're still trying to do what the world said. No, 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 no. I recommend we just follow God's instruction. Be careful to obey what? All the instructions. Then you will be successful in everything you do. So you need to find out what the instructions are. And then you need to follow them. And you need to know that I'm telling you, you it, it, yes, and all who desire to be live godly in Christ Jesus will encounter persecutions. You're going to encounter that position because the world does not like you. The world system, the spirit over this world system is a demonic spirit. You know it's, you know it's, you know it's, I mean, anybody living here five minutes know this thing ain't right. I don't know why we think it's going to be right. It's so cockeyed. You know what I mean? You know, charging you a ton of money for this and a ton of money for that and, and, and giving you, paying you this little bit. And you under my control. I'm gonna keep you under my control. I'm gonna charge you all of this. I'm gonna pay you all of this. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make sure you're always in my debt, so I can control you. It's a new modern communistic. Well, you gotta live under that if you don't know Jesus. But if you know Jesus, then He'll design a system for you. He'll tailor a system for you, and he'll raise you above this thing. And you won't, they won't, you won't, he won't let them control you. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You say, but that's where it is, not, not for them. For them. For them. God will, God will prepare a table before me in the very presence of my enemies. He's already said that. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the economy. God's economy has nothing to do with this one. But 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 the, but the, but the, but the cost is up here and the wages is down here. So what? That's all they know. But I got one for you. I'll feed you in the middle of your enemies. Why do you think that is put there? Because God knew that these days would come before they got here. Ah. Oh, you uh, yeah. He, what did he say? Then you will be successful in everything you do. Well, what about if the cost is up here and the income that? Well, that, that has nothing to do with my system. Don't you? Can you see that? Don't you see the supernatural system that God has for His people? God does not leave us here to depend on Satan's system. If you'll obey God, He'll feed you in the middle of them. They'll all be sucking their thumb. You'll be eating filet mignon. Yeah. I'm like, come on. No, but, but see, people, people, I'm telling you, this, I know this is the truth. You do not have to bow to this demonic Babylonian system in order to be successful. 
God's instruction says, then you will be successful in everything you do. As long as good interest rates are up. No, it has nothing to do with no interest rates. It has nothing to do with this Babylonian system here. I don't depend on this. I do not depend on it. I depend on God. I trust God. And people, I'm telling you, you better hurt, you better learn the same thing and stop trusting this thing. This thing is, this thing has got a hole in it. The hole in the bottom is bigger than the hole in the top. It's demonic. It's demonic. Come on. And God has designed a system that will sustain you irrespectful to what happened. When it like back in the days of Elijah, yeah, things were bad. Well, the crows brought him some food. Dear God. You see that? Ravens brought him bread and water in the morning. The raven? Yeah. What, what, what difference does it make? And then he brought Israel out of Egypt. And they didn't, they were there, they were, they, they left, left, they left everything. And he got, he just fed them from above. I don't want to, do we believe that? See what I mean? How are you going to feed 600,000 men plus wives and children? You see that? You can't pack that much lunch. God said, go out in the morning and I'll have your breakfast on the floor, on the ground. My God. See, I don't know if we really believe that. The way we carry on, I wonder, do we really believe that? Do we believe the Bible is a fairy tale? Do we believe that this is just another mother goose book? You know, do we treat this like the three bears and the three pigs? Or do we treat it like the word of God? We need to, you know, we have to constantly evaluate ourselves because it's very easy. It's very easy to mentally treat this just like we treat a, a textbook and treat it as historic fiction rather than the Word of God. Do you really believe that God delivered three Hebrew boys out of a fiery furnace? Do we believe that Adam and uh, 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 Young man actually spent the night in the Daniel, spent the night in the den with lions. Do we really believe that? Do we really believe that young David stood up to this big old giant? Do we really believe that or is this just another entertainment story? Do we believe that God rained manna down from heaven to feed Israel with? You see what I mean? Why did God put that there? Why does he put such stories, such information, and call it his word. Why does he do that? Because he knew of days like today. He knew of the crooked systems that we would have to live in, in this earth environment. When there is no fairness, when there is political control, he knew that. So he already built a record for himself within the days of old. So that you and I could live through these days and be successful in our ministry. And God would be able to care for us just like he did in the days of old. In the middle of a crooked system. That's why it's there. So, so don't, 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 don't ever think that you're smart and I know how to invest. No, no, you don't know anything. Forget that. All I know is that I will follow God's instructions and then I will be successful in everything I do. That's what I know. Why, why are you living so good? Because I'm successful in everything I do because I obey God. I don't know about, I don't know about investing. What do I know? What's up and what's down? I don't know. You follow what I'm saying? Well, you seem to be doing it. Yeah, I am. I'm already doing all right. Why? Because God said so. God feeds me manna from above. 
He'd use whatever system he wants to use. As long as I get full. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to have to accept this. And we're going to have to understand. And stop stop trying to care for yourself. And let God take care. His, do what he has already promised to do. And then you will be successful in everything you do. I'm walking in the love that God's called me to walk in. I set my heart to walk in love. I refuse to live any other way but walk in love. I refuse to not love. But I'll do it. I'll love, I'll love people. I'll be kind to people. I will forgive people. I'll do it exactly how God does it. Why? Because that's what he has trained me to do. That's what he has poured into me. That is in me. The life of God is inside of me because I, I receive his instruction. When you receive the instructions of God, those instructions get down inside of you and make you just like Jesus. You become just like him. It's a process. It's a day by day process. And the longer you do this, the more Jesus will be in you and the more you will look and act like Jesus. The older you get, the more you're going to look like Jesus. I'm telling you. Why? Because the word of God is living. Yeah. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even down to the interior of the, of the innermost being of the human. It will go down into you and, 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 and transform you. And grow Jesus out of you. Following God's instruction. This is the encouragement that the church need. Get your eyes off of the system. And get your eyes on the word of God. Opposition will come. And yes, and all. How many? All. Nobody going to escape. No. Nobody going to escape this. All who desire... To live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Because the see we see here's the thing. We live in a system that's opposite God. That's that's the clash. See, we purpose to be kind to one another, to love one another. And to forgive one another as God and Christ forgave us. Well, we live in a system that's conniving and manipulative and looking to try to get over on you. So it's going to be what? A clash. Well, what's going to happen? Well, the love that God has placed in me is going to dominate that manipulating system that's coming against me. That's the persecution, you see. See, the persecution is the manipulating system of this world coming against you. And the power of God is going to cause me to dominate you. It's the same as this. All of hell was released on Jesus. Right? What happened three days later? Jesus is standing and hell is at his feet's footstool. You see that? That's the way it is. That's, that's the way it is. But see, watch this. It really looked bad. It looked like hell was winning. When Jesus hung his head and died, didn't it look like he had lost? There may be times it's going to look like you have lost. But I dare you to wait till the morning sunrise. You're going to be standing tall and hell is going to be at your feet. That's what that's what he is talking about. Yeah, and all the will of God there will suffer, but out of them all you will be delivered. So what do I do in meanwhile? Well, look at verse number 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Continue 
in my word. Abide in my word. Jesus said, you abide in my word. Continue in my word. And you will know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Jesus speaks to us in Revelation 3.21. And he says to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. That's what you and I are looking forward to. He said to him that overcome, stick with it. Don't, no, 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 don't give up. Don't turn coward. Don't cave in. Don't throw up your hand. Don't say I've had it. Don't say I'm done. No, 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 no. I'm done only when Jesus said, well done. And I'll stand my ground and I will operate in the God given authority that he's given unto me. Ain't nobody going to turn me. Ain't nobody going to shut me down. Ain't nobody going to shut me up because God has given me the authority and the ability to do whatever needs to be done. I will follow his instructions. I will love people. I will love people. I will forgive them. And I will be kind to them in the same way that Jesus has done for me. And I'll do what he told me to do as long as I'm on this earth. And nobody can shut me down. And nobody's going to stop me. And I'm going to run this thing until the end. I encourage you to make a decision to do the same. I, I'm not, no, no, no. The quitting and, 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 and stopping is not even in the cards. Giving up is not even in the cards. St- no, no. Why don't you quit? What? I didn't come this far to quit. No, indeed. I'm going to run this thing through. And heaven is backing me 100%. You ready to get this thing done? Come on, let's get it done. Hallelujah. Let's get it done. Hallelujah. So, Father, we so thank you. I honor you today. Thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy. I thank you for your people, Father. I thank you for the viewing audience, these, oh God, that are homebound. I pray for every soul that's under the sound of my voice. God, that each of us would be sensitive to the instructions that you have given unto us to give heed to your word, to follow your instructions so that we can be successful in every endeavor. We bless you today, Father. We honor you and we love you, Jesus, so much because you are the one that set the example for us. You are the one that went before us. You are the one that paved the way. And now we are running our race. We honor you and thank you that you have allowed us to be a part of of your family. Let's go do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go do it.